So I, I basically want to start this live off kind of reiterating something that those of you that are in my master class have heard probably time and time again. But sometimes if you say it differently, um, it maybe make, makes a little bit more sense. And so I'm thinking about, you know, what I can, uh, what helpful information can I give those people that are looking at growing or starting a YouTube channel in 2021? You know, what, trying to think about what are the most, what, what is the most important information I can get across to them? And this is what I came up with. Basically, that unless, hi, La Diamond, hi, Cecilia, Maisha, Justin, and who else did I say hi to, Gina? Good. Um, that if you're going to want to start or grow a YouTube channel in 2021, that unless there is something particular, particularly unique or interesting about you or your situation, that it's going to be very difficult to grow a blog channel. And this is because the YouTube algorithm is going to reward those channels that either cater to a very specific target audience or that focus on a specific subject. So going into 2021, I think the question you need to ask yourself is, am I a subject matter expert? And if so, if you are, then in what? Is there a particular subject that you're very knowledgeable about? That you're, hey David, <laughs> that you're passionate about, that you're exceptionally talented in? And maybe another question you should ask yourself is, can I create content that brings value to a particular type of viewer? That's the first point. The second point is that in order to grow a successful channel from scratch in 2021, you've got to be prepared to put out a lot of content. And this is going to be at least two videos a week and preferably three. But in order to do this, you need to have content ideas. So you need to have at least 100 video ideas written down. And remember that this is a list that you're going to have to continually add to. So if this is something that you're struggling with, that takes you back to point number one. What's the subject that you're knowledgeable about, passionate about, or have talent around? If you can kind of hone in on that subject, then it'll be easier for you to come up with these content ideas. Thanks, Brika, for uh, waking up. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to give you something valuable that you haven't heard me say before. Somebody, Maybe someone else in the group has a question that hasn't been posed before. So I want you guys, I want what I would like right now is for you guys to give me some feedback on what you just heard me say. You don't have to agree with me. If you disagree, let me know. Or if you have uh, specific questions around that, around a target subject or a target audience. And hopefully I can shed more light on that. And then two, on the, the frequency and the uh, amount of content that you're going to have to put out in order to be successful. So go, just ask, you can post your question right there in the, um, in the, where you guys are chatting. And, you know, if nobody has any questions or uh, feedback or input on what I just said, you can definitely add, ask a totally different question around YouTube. And I think there's a little bit of a lag. So if I don't see your question right away, I will catch up to it in a moment. Yeah, um, I would have liked to have three. You know, it always makes sense to have three important points. But for the purposes of this live, 
the most important to me were just those two. You know, once you get past those two points, you know, who are you making content for and how much content can you create around your channel? Then you can move on to all the other extra stuff that it takes to grow your channel. So LaQuavia, hello. She says, okay. LaQuavia says she has a journal full of video ideas, but you want to figure out how to make them viral worthy. Don't spend too much time on that. Just start making that content, LaQuavia. You will find out that, especially if you're just starting out, you really don't know what's going to go viral. Sometimes the oddest content will go viral on your channel. And sometimes there's content that you think is going to go viral that you've worked really hard on crafting and strategizing around, and it doesn't go anywhere. So my advice to you, LaQuavia, would just to be to start putting out the content. Uh, Keisha says her question. Keisha, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, but I'm going to get to my Isha's, my Isha, Misha, Murray's question. You say, how often do videos need to be put out? If you don't care about growth and you just want to have slow, see a slow, steady um, increase of views and subscribers, minimum, minimum once a week. Twice a week is better. Three times a week is best. That's my opinion. Three times a week. Just so you can build up some momentum so that you can throw your video ideas out there and see what sticks, see what people like, see what they're resonating with, uh, so that you get better at putting out content, you get better at editing, you get better at reading your analytics. The more you, content you, you push out, the better you're going to get at everything overall. So Keisha asks, in regards to click-through rate, does it matter at the video level or channel level regards to increasing your click-through rate? So Keisha, you'll notice on your analytics that you're going to have a click-through rate. If you look at your analytics, say, for the last 28 days, in your analytics, it's going to tell you your average click-through rate for the last 28 days. If you set it for the last 90 days, it's probably going to be different. If you set that uh, filter for the last year it's going to be different what i like to do is, is look at no more than the last 90 days what is your channel's click-through rate and then what you want to work on is inching up your each video's click-through rate to be, be at least that much or more like i said to beat your own time get your click through if your click if your average click-through rate across because video they're gonna vary you may have some videos with low click-through rates and some with really high click-through rate what you need to do is look at those videos with the higher click-through rate study them try to determine what it is about those videos that's getting the higher click-through rate and try to duplicate that but your goal and your objective is to beat your own time on your average click-through rate uh let me see what was the next question. I thought I saw. Uh, how often? Click through rate. Dunia says, I'm a well web developer by day, but I'm not sure I have enough passion around that to actually create a channel around it. Okay. So then my question to you, Dunia, is what is your, what's pushing you towards being a YouTube creator? And you can think about that answer to that as I answer some other questions. What's pushing you? If you don't have passion around a particular subject to create a channel around it, then why do you want to be a YouTube creator? Yimi says, I've had a YouTube channel for two years now. I've uploaded a vlog about going to pick up my Yorkie and boom, two weeks later, I was able to monetize. Wow. That's huge. Now all the videos I make are focused on him and do amazing. It's so weird because I had no idea that's what be what my channel turned into. You just never know. And so that's why you're when you're new, you need to put out a lot of content. And it's okay 
even. If you're not quite sure, if you're thinking, oh, I may want to do this, but maybe I want to dabble in that, to experiment with those different two or three different subjects and to see which ones end up taking off. Two weeks later, that's amazing. Um, I create, Gina says, hi Gina, she creates gift baskets and balloon decor, but I'm trying to see how to start a YouTube channel showing what I do. I think there are a lot of video opportunities around how, how to, that people, you know, definitely are interested in DIY and do it yourself, but you could also, and what I would encourage anyone who has an idea around a business, a product or service is to just, you know, use your channel to teach, but also use channel, your channel to funnel customers to your paid product, you know, to get more clients if that's something you want to do to grow that gift basket and balloon decor business, especially with gift baskets since they're shippable. I don't see why it can't be a nationwide business. Balloon decor may be more local, but you know, the, the awesome thing about that is that using YouTube, your YouTube channel as a marketing vehicle, you don't have to have hundreds and thousands of followers. You just need to have a specific group of followers that you uh, attract attention, attract their attention that are interested in your, that may be interested in your gift baskets and your balloon decor. Okay, uh, whose question was I looking at? Uh, Donia, um, I'm Gina, Sonia. Sonia says she'd love to see a channel like that, but I agree if you don't love it, don't do it. Are you talking about, Sonia, are you talking about the, um, the web development? Or are you talking about the balloon bouquet? Because I don't know which, which one you're responding to, but you're right. There are a lot of people interested in a lot of things. Any, just the options are limitless on YouTube or any other social media platform to attract an audience that's interested in what you're talking about. But you've either got to be very, very good at it or you've got to love it because of the amount of work that it's going to take to grow your audience. And it's not fun. I mean, you don't, if, you, if you're not excited about creating a video on XYZ, then you're going to have a hard time putting out the content and the content is what's going to grow your channel. Keisha says, that's what I'm doing right now. One of my videos that's doing really well has a click-through rate of 12%. Woo, that's good. 12% is awesome. Uh, Dawn says, she is a metalsmith who is self-taught, so I'm wanting to document my journey. Absolutely. Definitely do that. That's a very, see, that is specific. That is metalsmithing. There are, you know, Thousands of people, I'm sure, who are interested in metalsmithing, either learning metalsmithing or just watching people do metalsmithing. I always give that example of journaling and how I watch uh, particular journaling um, channels. I am not so much interested in doing the journaling myself. I just like to watch people do journaling. So I'm pretty sure that there are people out there who like, who want to watch people. Do metal smithing. Dunia says, two things I want to have, two things for YouTube, because I, I asked Dunia what, why she wanted to be on a YouTube creator. You want to have a memory bank to share with your family, okay? And I was a teacher for a really long time, and I want to get back to teaching either English as a second language or focus on nutrition and fitness catering to older women. So web development, teaching, Nutrition, fitness catering. That's what four different subjects that you have a possibility to create content around. And you're going to have to dig deep in yourself to really try to figure out which one of those um, subject matters you can see yourself creating content about on YouTube. And if it's just for family memory, just to share memories, then, you know, 
you can create whatever co content you like. Um, if you want to have just a record, you know, for your own personal self, and you're not trying to grow a YouTube channel for uh, income or for business purposes. L'Oreal says, is it I? I don't know what that question is, is in response to. And Sonia said, yes, yeah, she would watch the web development content. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would watch that content, either because they're trying to learn or they're just, you know, they just have an interest in web development. L'Oreal says, oh, <laughs> she was starting to, to type and hit return. So L'Oreal said, is it important to have a manager? Uh, it depends at, on at which stage of the YouTube journey you're in. If you are starting to, um, well, a manager for what though? So there's different kinds of managers. There's managers that can handle the back end, social media managers that can handle the back end of your YouTube channel to uh, make sure your videos are optimized, um, to help you with promotion, um, to help you um, look at your analytics and help you with the growth strategy. And there's also managers that help with um, uh, brand deals, negotiating brand deals. Uh, so it really depends on at what stage in your, you know, if, if you have got so much on your plate that you can't handle um, the work around your channel, then it may be time to look at getting a manager. Brika says, I think YouTube is confused about my channel. Okay. I, ha I can't remember your ch what your channel is about, Rika, but it may be. And uh, you can try posting some consistent content several days in a row to see if that alleviates that problem. So Desiree says, what advice would I have if one is being inconsistent, is being consistent, is being consistent, but the views just aren't there? <laughs> it's a lot of time and work into putting out videos and I'm on the verge of just giving up. I'd have more questions than advice, Desiree. So I would say, cons how long have you been being consistent? I would ask you um, to look at, you know, do you have a large enough audience who's interested in the type of content you're putting out? Is the audience too large? Or in other words, is, is the target audience, is the subject matter you're creating videos around um, too saturated? Um, I would ask you to look at, there's several different reasons why the views aren't there. Is it because um, nobody's clicking on your videos to start watching. In that case, you would need to look at your click-through rate. Or do people start watching your videos and they click off because they don't like the content? So I would have more questions than advice because the advice is long. The advice is deep. The advice is varied depending on your channel. Keisha says, I need a manager, but how do you choose the right manager? Could I direct you in the direction? Unfortunately, no, I don't have any, uh, I don't know any other, I mean, I know a brand talent manager, but I don't know any other managers that I don't know of any other managers that manage like the back end of other creators YouTube channels. I know that there are companies that re that you know reach out to you that start reaching out to you once you have a certain amount of um subscribers and views. Uh I can't think of the names anymore. It used to be called Style Hall and maybe now it's called Full Screen. Um certain MCNs I don't really have any experience at working with them. And what you may need, if you feel like um, you need some help with your channel, maybe not think in terms of a manager, 
maybe think in terms of a virtual assistant. And just like, you know, I've been telling those of you in uh, my master class to look at um, Fiverr and Upwork to get assistance with certain areas of your channel, like your banner and your uh, thumbnails, or even editing, you could find someone possibly on Upwork, a virtual assistant who is um, well versed in YouTube to help you with your channel. So um, I'll, I'll do a little search after I finish this live and see what I can find on Upwork or Fiverr. But I bet you there are some contractors, some virtual assistants who focus on social media and focus on YouTube that could um, could help with, with your channel. I would just start small because managers typically take a percentage of your income and the difference in hiring a, um, a virtual assistant or someone on a contract basis is that you could decide like how much they work for you and how much you pay them. Yimmy asks, what do I think about Vlogmas? Is it a good chance or way to grow your channel? So I've heard, and I and what I know about Vlogmas is that frequent uploading, that daily uploading, if you can, can end up getting more views on your channel. Um, I tried, we tried it on the channel that I manage and it didn't really do much. Uh, I, I feel like Vlogmas at, is a concept that was that is at least four years old, maybe even five years old. And what Vlogmas did for channels four years ago, it's not, it may not, may not um, do for channels in, in 2020 or 2021. I don't know. Um, because it's a vlog. So if you are a creator who has a large following and people are already super interested in your content, then yeah, they might be interested in, um, you know, watching some of your vlogless videos. But if you're someone who's just trying to grow in a vlog arena, I'm, I'm just not sure what it can do for, um, Attracting a new audience to your channel. Latanya, how do you handle all the emails of the different brands reaching out to you, ask for reviews on products, or, or becoming ambassadors to their brand? Should you trust this? Can you do damage to your channel by doing all, all sorts of reviews? Um, I would just say make sure it's a product or a service that you believe in and that would be a good fit for your audience. Um, how I handled the emails up until just a couple of years ago and how I hand, how I handled them then and how they're handled now is, and this could be some filters that you set up or you could set up your own filters. I don't answer anything. I, I delete if I can tell that it's a mass email. If they don't call the creator by name and if, they don't give some indication that this is a one-to-one -one email. I delete it. If that brand or the person reaching out on behalf of the brand does not have a professional business signature that gives me the link to their website um, so I can check them out and see that it's a legitimate business, I don't answer it. If that business, uh, if that email does not specifically tell me about their product, if they say something like, hey, I think your, your uh, channel would be a great fit for our product, what is it? How, you know, tell me, let, give me a link to the product, let me look at it, and let me judge for myself. Don't just say, Hey, what are your rates? I hate that. Give me your rates for, I'm not giving you my rates because I may not want to do business with you. So, and this is for 
those of you that are reaching out to influencers, because you know, you can reach out to micro influencers to promote your own products. For instance, the lady with the, the balloon and gift basket um, business. You could, you could reach out to micro influencers in your uh, market that you know can maybe talk about your gift baskets or your balloon bouquets. But um, I feel that the, the person sending you the email should tell you about their product. They should tell you why they think that you're a good fit. And they should ask, you know, if you're interested in collaborating or doing sponsor contact content with them. Uh, just asking for rates, it's just not good, a good idea because the rates vary. <coughs> depending on a lot of variables with the sponsored content that um, we put out. And, you know, and, and you're asking, you know, can you do damage? One way damage can be done is if you say, if you're vouching for a particular company and that company maybe has poor customer service or your viewers uh, buy the product based on your opinion or your, your recommendation and they never get the product or the product is substandard, then yeah, that's going to reflect negatively on you. So you should really vet any brand that's contacting you to um, you know, see whether or not they look like they might be a reputable content co uh, company. So LaQuavia said, if you post on TikTok, there are some there. I had a couple reach out to me on Instagram that found me on TikTok. They're social media managers, virtual assistants. Okay. Yeah, virtual assistant might be the step you want to move to, because that's actually what I was doing. When I first started working for the Raven Elise TV channel, I didn't think of myself as a manager. I was basically a virtual assistant because I did virtual assistant work for other companies that weren't on that weren't on social media. So, you know, things like uh, paying invoices, answering email, um, and then it just kind of moved into, oh, well, let me see what I can help you with on your back end of YouTube. So Latanya Brickett says, Latanya has the same question. She has the same question. What if a company sends me stuff to do a review? Do I have to upload right away, even though I'm not getting paid? That's a good question. And you guys that are in my um, YouTube Growth Masterclass, I had a bright idea yesterday that for the next launch of this um, Masterclass that you guys are definitely going to be privy to, I want to add in some uh, content or some uh, classes about working with brands, because I think that even if you're not at the point where you're getting a lot of um, um, emails from brands reaching out to you, at some point as you start to grow, you will start getting it uh, reached out to. So, and, and usually at first they say, let me send you some free product in exchange for a review or in exchange for a video. First of all, even if the company asks you to do is send you stuff for free, there should be some type of written con contract. What they or or even just outlining it in the email, so that you have it memorialized in writing exactly what they are asking of you. You know, what do you want from me? How? Uh, can I give an, an honest review or do you have certain talking points that you want me to say? Um, what's the time frame? You know, they should tell you. You don't have to do anything. If they're not paying you, you don't have to do anything. In fact, um, we have companies send us free stuff all the time and with no obligation to uh, share on social media or to um, talk about it on any of our social media challenge, cha channels because, you know, even if it is a free product, you have to try it out. You have to see, you know, is this something I like? Is this something I feel comfortable recommending? So ask, don't feel bad, Rick, about asking lots of questions of the brand. What do you expect in return for this? 
and letting them know what you can do. I may be able to share this in an Instagram story. I may be able to mention this in an upcoming YouTube video. I may be able to just include a link in my description box to uh, your product. So just be sure you're being clear with them. Well, Tanya says you're flooded with emails. I know once they get once they get a hold to you, they don't let up. And so um, yeah, you said you've reached out to a couple of micro to some micro influencers and you've only gotten a couple of replies. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. The more you reach out to, the more you're probably going to um, get a response. And then kind of fine tuning and crafting your pitch to them, you know, letting them know who you are and why you reached out to them and why you think that it would be a good fit. Um, L'Oreal wants to know, how do you determine your rates as a new YouTuber? Well, the way I did it was I just guessed. And that wasn't that wasn't the best um, approach. We just guessed and then we just started raising the rates and seeing where people started pushing back. If you go on to socialbluebook.com, they have changed things. Um, it may you may have to pay to get any information. They went from being like totally free to free for only one account to now I think you have to pay but it would be worth it and depending on what they're charging. Let me see what they're charging. Socialbluebook.com, you connect your, um, your accounts, your Facebook, your Instagram, your YouTube, um, and they will tell you what, um, let me see what they're charging now. They will tell you, I can't see it right now, what your low end, what your mid range, and what your high end rate should be. When I first started looking at Social Blue Book, I, because we were charging a lot less than what they were recommending, I was like, oh my God, nobody's going to pay that. But guess what they do? So mid, uh, that, that mid range, um, of what Social Blue, Blue Book recommends for your your you should rate you should charge is definitely where you should be, and I think there's a calculation like a thousand dollars per what a thousand dollars per hundred thousand um, subscribers, even though subscribers are not a good indicator of whether or not it's going to be a good idea for you to for a brand to partner with and uh, a youtuber you could have a million subscribers but your videos aren't hardly getting any views so how is that going to help that brand promote their product uh times uh, something like that i don't know i think you should uh, if you Google, you know, average rates for a YouTube creator, uh, it'll, you'll get, uh, you'll get some pretty good numbers without paying for if Social Blue Book is asking for you to pay for their um, service. Brianna, where should I start on YouTube? The hand's so broad. Should you niche down? Yes. And if you weren't here, Brianna, at the very beginning, that's one thing that I was saying is that um, you have got to pick a specific target audience or focus on one particular subject. And if that's niching, niching down, yes, you need to niche down. Uh, Brika says, if I'm not getting paid, but they sent me stuff, is that a sponsored video? Eh, technically, uh, is it? Yeah, I guess so. It's still spot. I mean, you know, you could say, it depends on what you say in your video. You could say, I was sent this product by XYZ company. The opinions here are my own and they have not paid me, but they did send it to me for free. I'll just make that disclaimer. 
Brianna says, I'm new and lots of brands want me to do stuff for free. Like I'm small, but my content is good enough for them to repost on their pages. That's right. So push back and start asking. Start asking for even if it's just a nominal fee, um, but make sure you have a contract. If you just did vlogmas, but instead of actual vlogs, you made substantial content, okay, within your niche, all December, do you think that would help with growth? Absolutely, because it's more frequent content. There you go. Make, that is a great idea. See, I learned something every time I talk to y'all. If you made substantial content within your niche for the month of December and just did a video a day, that's going to definitely help with growth. I can guarantee you that's going to help. Brianna wants to know, where do I find virtual assistant jobs? You mean people to do virtual assistant stuff for you or to be a virtual assistant? Um, same, you know, same place, Fiverr, Upwork. Um, there are some groups on Facebook. There was a virtual assistant group that I belong to on Facebook that, um, Sometimes posted people posted jobs or were looking for specific virtual assistants within a particular type of business. Barnesandnoble.com, Social Blue Book. Oh, sorry. Uh, Keisha said, I had Dermatica slid in my email to create content but not pay. Then I see the beautiful Jackie, I ain't not doing an Instagram video for them. And you know they must have paid her. Yes, they try to, listen, whatever these brands are paying influencers, in my opinion, it is not too much. Because just think about what they would have to pay to get their brand in front of any other targeted audience if they were um, creating a television commercial, which nobody watches any, anyway, anymore. People are DVRing and DV, D, D, DVR are using their DVR to fast forward through commercials. And then you don't even know if you have a targeted audience in front of you. So just think, if Dermatica wanted to create a television commercial, they would have to hire someone, hire a model, they would have to hire light lighting people. They would have to hire um, hair and makeup. They would have to hire uh, all kinds of behind the scenes production people. They would have to uh, spend a day filming. Maybe they'd have to pay a, a location to film and then uh, a videographer, they film it and then they've got to pay the television network an extraordinary amount just to run that 30 second commercial. Hmm. So I don't care if they paid Jackie Ina $100,000. It's not too much because she has over 3 million people. And these aren't people that are interested in uh, welding and uh, web development. I'm just using that because we were talking about these two subjects. These are people that are interested in skincare. So even if you, as a small creator, Keisha, with um, you know 5,000 subscribers, I don't remember how how many you have, but five, even even a small creator with 5,000 subscribers who gets you know two, one, uh, a thousand, or two thousand eyes on their content over the lifetime, plus that content is evergreen. That video that we're just, since we're just talking about Jackie, that she posted is going to be on her channel likely forever. Typically the brands will ask for the video to stay up for at least a year, but most uh, content creators just leave their videos up. Why wouldn't they? It contributes to their watch time. So that is evergreen content that's gonna be seen by a target audience over and over and over and over again forever. And so, yes, my answer is push back. As a micro-influencer, push back. It might be $100. It might be $200. You got to start somewhere. 
And, you know, don't take it personally. If you could probably get something for free, you you probably would too. I don't know. Don't take it personally. They're, they're, they are in business to make money and to keep as much of their money as possible. If they find micro influencers who are willing to, and there's nothing wrong with, with uh, accepting product in return. If you want that product, if you as, a, as the influencer need to create content anyway, and this is a way, this gives you some content to create, nothing wrong for doing it for free. But also don't be afraid to, if you get to a point, to ask for a fee in exchange for your services. Yeah, uh, Brianna, it's funny because not all brands know exactly what they're doing, especially the larger ones, especially the larger ones. Not all brands know what they're doing as far as working with um, influencers to promote their product. They sometimes too closely try to align it with how they worked with uh, promotion in mainstream media, and it's not the same thing. So I am not surprised that a brand may see someone, and I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about Jackie, I'm talking about maybe a, a different type of influencer who has millions of subscribers, but is, is not really, doesn't really have an audience anymore. And they're just looking at the subscribers. So hopefully they're getting away from that. And uh, yeah, they say they don't have the budget because they probably already spent that budget. They spent their budget already. And that's okay. Next time, maybe next time, they'll get to you before they've spent their budget. Um, so Devin, Davina, Davina says that she's doing blog Simber, but her daily uploads will be content videos and just a handful of blogs. That's a great idea. Brika asks, do I have a template on how to write companies to get sponsorships or products? I don't, but I'll be working on that for the next um, launch of the YouTube Masterclass. Yeah, you know, just move on. Take uh, Sashana. Uh, if they don't want to pay you, just say, well, I'm sorry, due to budget, I'm not able to work with you at this time because you don't have a budget. But definitely keep me in mind for future projects. Just be nice about it. So come back. Uh, it's free content for you to make, and then you can use them in your press kit. That's true. That's also true, LaQuavia, because as you're new and you're building your, your little dossier, you can definitely uh, let people know in your media kit, hey, I've worked with this company. It doesn't matter that it's been, you know, for free, that they didn't pay you if you created some content. But, you know, do a certain amount of that to get your feet wet, to, um, to show people that, you know, you've worked with this caliber of company because that's another thing that happens. Once one company sees, because they know, see that you have worked with one of their competitors, then they'll come to you and they'll start um, looking at, you know, maybe, you know, as you start to grow, doing paid deals with you too. Yeah, strengthening your relationship with your audience and making content better and consistent. That is it, Brianna. Can I just, can we just highlight that, that you just said? Focus on getting better. Focus on strengthening your relationship with your audience and making your content better and more consistent. L'Oreal says, how can I get more uh, info about the YouTube class? I am going to be starting a wait list soon, but if you just want to go to my website, TonyTannerScott.com. Make sure you signed up for my mailing list. I will be sending out information about the new class within the next month. Yeah, if they also, Brianna, if they repost you, you can ask. So understand that when you're working with brands, everything is negotiable, everything. Then don't just go on what they tell you. That's a mistake I made early on. The brands would, 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 um, would approach me and they would say, hey, we would like to work with you on this, to do a video, YouTube video for this project. 
our budget is X and we want you to do this, this, and this, and this. And I would look at it and go, okay, <laughs> never push back on anything, not knowing that everything is negotiable. And these companies, most of the time, are more than willing to negotiate if they have room for negotiation. So if they're not paying you and they're going to repost you, that's another thing I learned, that in the contracts that we do now, if they're going to repost, there's certain terminology for that that I wasn't aware of until I, until I started working with a professional talent agent that that's going to cost you more. Oh, you're going to pay me for the video and then you're going to pay me more if you want to repost it on your own channels. So something that you could do is say, okay, if you repost me, I need you to give me credit and I need you to link my channel. I need you to give my Instagram account. You know, again, that goes back to having something in writing. And even if you write it yourself and get them to agree to it by email, that's better than nothing. So Don wants to know, is the class for newbies? This particular class I'm talking about, the YouTube Growth Master class, is not for newbies. It's an advanced class, but I am working on, and I know I've been saying this for months, but I truly, truly am working on a class for newbies. And since, Don, you asked, let me ask you a question. What do you, as a newbie, want to learn more about? And while you're thinking of that, I'm going to look at Brianna's comment. She says, I have, and they just give me the runaround for months, but they reposted my content right away and got their attention. They ghost me. Yeah, no, no, no. Make that agreement with them before, before you create the content and tell them you want it in writing. And maybe that's where, you know, having a manager would come in. I've heard someone say that they created like a manager email account and respond to brand deals through that account as if they were had a manager. That can be a little tricky and I would be all confused on who I was emailing as what, but um, sometimes they were, they, they can, can kind of be disrespectful to small creators. And so they may respond better if you have someone who is acting as, even if it's your mother, your cousin, your sister, as your manager with a professional, I manage Brianna Smith. Uh, yeah, keep pushing, Brianna. Mainly how to start the basics. Okay, that's still broad. Give me, give me more information, Don. Like how to start, do you need to know how to create your YouTube channel or do you just need to know how to post to YouTube or what the right way, what things you need to be doing on your back end? Do you need to know about editing? Can I have, can you have subtopics under one channel on YouTube to keep things separate? So Donia, not sub topics, but you can create playlists to keep things separate for your viewers. Rika, what did you say? Let me see. Rika, 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 Rika. Oh, did I have a template? Did I answer that one? I was saying, no, I don't. Is that, that the one question you're asking about the template for how to reach out to brands for sponsors? I don't, but I will work on putting one together. Yeah, Brianna, you can be your own manager, but if you're like me, uh, kind of hard to keep keep the lines of communication straight. But if you can do it, definitely. Um, do any other did that make sense about playlists? So, but I was saying the playlists are mainly for your viewers and people who may land on your channel to see a certain type of content, categorize your content in that way. So she needs to know how to create the channel, how to read the analytics, how to market the channel. So some of those things are advanced. If you're just growing, you need to 
focus on just getting the content out there. If you're starting newbie, a newbie, get the content out there, get the content out there, get the content out there. You need to know a little bit about analytics and you need to know a little bit about marketing, but there's just so much to know in the, um, for newbies that don't have to do with analytics. I think in this class that I'm going to create, I'm going to touch on just like one or two of the most important things in your analytics that you need to pay attention to. And that anybody needs to pay attention to, whether you've just gotten started or you've been on YouTube a while. Thanks, Nicole. I appreciate it. Nicole says she loves my course. So Michelle says, and the big question is, where do you find the best times to post in your time zone? In right in the back end of your YouTube. Right in the back end of your YouTube, if you go to your analytics, and if you go to, I believe it is your audience. YouTube has a little graph down there and it's telling you the best times to post. Brianna, it's really important to keep your mindset on the creating, to focus on what makes you happy. That's right. She started making content talking about tea. I just have a plain teacup, no tea brand, but you know, I still like tea. Absolutely, that's branding. What is your channel about? People need to know at a glance, if they see, come across your banner, what's this channel about? If, you're, if, you're, if your banner says, Brianna Nicole, that tells me nothing. You got to put more there. It's, it's great that your name is there, but that's not branding. Uh, how many Facebook groups do I have? Too many. Uh, Brika, I have the private Facebook group for the YouTube Masterclass. And then I have, when I first started thinking about this journey, I created a group for YouTube starters. And then I created a group for YouTube growth. People are interested in growth. And I tried to be very specific about who should be in each group. But what turns it turns out that I have a lot of crossover. So when people saw that I had Facebook groups, they just joined as many as they could. I used to also have one for YouTube business, but I have archived that group because I feel like the business either is gonna fall into the starters or the ones that have already gotten good momentum going on YouTube and are looking for growth. So that's what I mean. I mean, of course, if you're just starting out, you wanna grow. But there are people who are just starting out need to focus on just doing the basics, just starting, just putting out content. And there are people who have done that work to put out the content, who have 100 videos or more up, who've been on YouTube for a year or more, who have started to see some type of traction, some type of growth on their channel, but are looking to take it to the next level. And that's what the growth group is about. So uh, Leah says, I think how to set up your YouTube channel page properly would be a good part of YouTube days. Yes, I agree. And she says, I didn't realize how much I was missing from my homepage until the masterclass. Yes, that is definitely pretty much everything in the first three modules of the masterclass is definitely going to be in the starter group, which is talking about your branding, your ideal viewer, um, creating a channel trailer, uh, your, your home page, you know, how to set that up, how to set up your about page, how to figure out your channel tags and all of that. And then the third module about your videos, you know, titles, thumbnails, descriptions. Um, and then from there, only a little bit of the next four modules, three modules, because I don't want to overwhelm people with, uh, and also because it's not going to apply to you. If I'm telling you to post more of your popular content, then if you're a newbie, you won't really have any popular content. So from there, maybe uh, delving into a little bit about how to edit your videos to keep people watching 
and the different video components and what's important to be in each video. And then a little bit about view velocity, about understanding that, and about starting to think about promoting your channel. And to end it, um, touching on consistency and frequency and how to create your content calendar and keep up with things. Um, but I also feel like there's something that we didn't talk about in the, in the growth masterclass that new people need. And that's around, because even a lot of, you know, a lot of you guys that are in the masterclass wanted to circle back to that. And that is around your niche, your target audience. What is your content about? And so I feel like that needs to be a module kind of like before we get into all of this, like really trying to hone in on why you're on YouTube, what are you making content about, what value is your content, how to figure out the value of your content for your target audience. And if anything, anybody else has anything else that I've just, you know, I know I've just kind of quickly gone through some things I'm thinking about that you feel needs to be in a, uh, and I want to call this something like how to start YouTube the right way so that you don't make a lot of these mistakes a, a lot of us made when we first started YouTube. And then we had to go back and correct and level up in those areas. Dunya says, if you have something of value to someone else and you negotiate, they will pay. Absolutely. My first year at my job, I didn't negotiate and only received a $3,000 raise. The following year, I created a folder, yes ma'am, and documented all the things I did to make the money, company more money, and I got a $20,000 raise. Dunya, you can make videos about that because that is absolutely true. Brika says, so I shouldn't add myself to the others. Well, I mean, you know, it doesn't hurt, Brika, because you're in my master class, right? And if the purpose of the Facebook groups is to kind of um, have a community of people, to have me to answer questions and to kind of step in every now and then, but to have the community help each other. And by that, I mean, yes, definitely ask for feedback. Ask for feedback on, you know, an idea that you have about content, about, you know, what, what, um, thumbnail would you choose this one or this one you know what I'm finding though is that a lot of people join my groups and maybe there's some other YouTube groups out there that are designed for this but I've tried to make it very clear that my groups are not designed for just promoting your content that's not gonna work it's first of all it's not gonna work secondly it's not gonna work thirdly that's not what it's for uh, so that's what those groups are, and I would encourage anyone who's in those groups to definitely take advantage of your audience that's in there. I think there's hundreds of people, probably close to 600 people in one group, 800 in another group, that you can that you can bounce your ideas off. You have a built-in focus group for your YouTube channel in those groups if you choose to use it in that way. In the beginning stages of your channel, it should be quantity over quality. I think so, Justin. I mean, I, I don't think you should ever try to put out crap, but definitely it, if you have to choose between quantity and quality, choose quantity because your quality is going to improve with the quantity. So yeah, definitely. Don't be, you know, I'm a Virgo, I'm a perfectionist which is one reason why you haven't seen any new YouTube videos on my channel for like nine months. Not only have I been busy with, with my job as the business manager for Raven Elise TV, but I'm also busy with my course and with my coaching and with my consulting. And I don't like to really necessarily be in front of a camera without it being perfect. So therefore, no content. If I, I could let go of that, then I could just be 
talking about my ideas and what I think would be helpful for my audience and making video after video. So don't do as I do, do as I say and make that content. Um, any other questions about, uh, and any other input about what you are, what holes there are in, that you recognize in your learning about launching or growing your YouTube channel? So Don says, don't worry about equipment. I just have an iPhone, but I do have a camera that I'm bad at. I think that iPhone is fine. I, I've known channels. I've seen channels blow up based on just, you know, I think maybe editing on an iPhone may be a little trickier, but there are plenty of YouTube videos that tell you how to edit on your iPhone. If you only have an iPhone, do the iPhone. If you have a camera that you're bad at, spend some time learning that camera. Uh, I just heard this somewhere. I don't know. Uh, maybe it was on TikTok because I'm on TikTok a lot lately just for entertainment purposes and learning too is that um, a photographer says, it's always, he always gets asked like, what cameras do you use? What cameras do you use? What cameras do you use? And so he was showing different examples and he said, I used the Sony GX7 for this one. I used the Nikon 445. I'm making this up because I don't know what these cameras are. For this shot, I use the iPhone for that shot. Your best camera is the camera that you know how to use. So spend some time learning how to use your camera that you have before you go out and try to buy what you think is a better quality camera. So Leah says, I know there are bigger YouTubers that talk about turning their brand into a business. At what point do you think one should start that? Like getting an LLC for your brand or setting up a business account for your channel once you start making sufficient income. Um, I think that you need to set up a business account the minute you start making any income. Whether you set up an LLC, when you set up an LLC or an S Corp even is depending on, you know, where you, like what your future forecasts are. If you think like this year, I'm really going to blow up. I plan, I forecast, and I, I, I absolutely recommend that you set some goals for yourself. And it may be as simple as for 2021, I want to get two brand deals per month for my YouTube channel. And I want to get paid $500 per brand deal. And there's something about in the intention of that and writing that down that helps you manifest that, that helps you be aware of when those opportunities might be coming your way. So like if you say that, if you say, well, if I do two brand deals for $500 a piece, uh, then that means I'm going to make $12,000 in business income minimum. You know, that's not counting your AdSense. It's not counting whatever your affiliate, your product sales. Then by that time, you, you might think, yeah, okay, well, first part of the year, one of the things I need to set up is an LLC to protect those assets. So it's, there's no hard and fast rule, Leah. I would just think that if you're projecting that you're going to make more than a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars on your channel during the year, then definitely set up your LLC or whatever type of, you know, business um, arrangement you, you think would be best for you. You're a Vibra, Brica, a Vibra. A Virgo Libra? Me too, Rico. When's your birthday? Uh, so Dunia says, my homework is going to narrow down my niche, find my target audience, yep. Start my channel, pushing out content, 30 days of blankety blank blank. And this way I can see what people are interested in and narrow in on that. Do it, just do it. That's my advice, just do it. All right, well, I think I've uh, been on an hour. Um, it's rainy and gloomy here. I just thought this would be a good day to go live with you guys. And um, I will definitely post this <laughs> on uh, in all the groups, on my Facebook page, and on YouTube in case anybody else is interested. And uh, to answer Shoshana's last question, did she contract with somebody to make her shambles merchandise? Yes, me. 
<laughs> actually, she made the label, she made the design. Um, we found a local company here. Ours was very, it was very labor intensive and I don't know if I would recommend it, but we found a local company here and we picked our shirts and we picked our vinyl and they made it. They made the shirts for us. But then we had to lug it to our garage and store it and ship it. But if you want to talk more about that, uh, Shoshana, send me an email and uh, I'll just pass along whatever I know about merchandise. Also, if you're thinking about doing something like t-shirts that's heat press and you're going to do a small amount, uh, there's a guy that I follow on um, TikTok. I can't think of his name, but I will put it in the description box of this video or in the comment section um, that he makes excellent videos about starting a t-shirt business or making merch, you know, using your Cricut machine and your ironing board. So Brianna, my groups are the YouTube Grow group and YouTube Starter group. I will also put the links um, in the description box so that you can um, join or look at joining one of the groups. And it's under Tony Tanner Scott. If you go to Tony Tanner Scott on Facebook, you'll see the three different groups I have. And you're welcome, Nicole. I love having you and David in my course and getting your feedback. If anybody has any more feedback for, for me, you can email me. If you think of something, something comes to mind, like after this live, email me at Tony at TonyTannerScott.com, T-O-N-I, TannerScott.com. And I'll definitely look forward to hearing from you. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.